Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Mark Martin. President Trump's plan to give the American people a tax cut by Christmas has moved another step closer to reality. Debate on a Republican tax reform bill is now underway in the United States Senate. Gary Lane has more. As the Senate debate on tax reform began, President Trump made one final push for approving the measure before a crowd in Missouri. President again voiced optimism that a tax reform bill will be delivered to his desk for signing by Christmas. At a St. Louis rally, he said the country is on the verge of a thrilling new era of opportunity and growth. The beating heart of our plan is a tax cut for working families. That's what it is. We're going to make sure that you keep more of your hard-earned money. We're going to make sure also that you have a job that you want. You're going to have choice. But Democrats have chosen not to support the Republican plan. Debate began with a strong show of Republican Party unity, with every GOP senator supporting it. The vote came on straight party lines 52 to 48. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and the Democrats say the bill favors the wealthy. If the president and Republicans in Congress set out to pass a middle class tax cut as they claim, if that's where they set out, this bill completely misses the mark. President Trump insists the Republican plan will cut taxes by $2,000 for the typical American family of four earning $75,000 annually. The version of the bill already approved by the House of Representatives cuts the corporate tax rate from 35 to 20 percent. But some senators are considering only cutting it to 21 or 22 percent. That may help Senate Republicans gain enough support within their own party to pass the bill. Bumping the rate to 22 percent would raise another $200 billion over the next decade. That would help win the votes of Senate Republicans who want to expand the child tax credit and keep deductions for property and state income taxes. The president wants to keep the corporate tax rate at 20 percent, but Republicans expect he may likely sign a bill Trump that slightly raises that rate. We are going to be celebrating Merry Christmas again, and it's going to be done with a big, beautiful tax cut. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Still to be worked out is language that would trigger automatic spending cuts or tax increases if Washington doesn't get as much money in taxes as expected. And if the Senate passes its bill, differences with the House bill will have to be worked out in conference committee. Gary Lane, CBN News. Overseas now, North Korea is pushing the world closer to war, and if war happens, the rogue regime will be utterly destroyed. That from United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley speaking at an emergency meeting of the Security Council after North Korea launched its most sophisticated missile yet. She called on all nations to cut off diplomatic ties with the regime, limit commercial contact, and expel North Korean workers from their countries. More directly, she called on China to cut off its oil supply to the north. Doing so in 2003 brought the country to the negotiating table. No one can doubt that this threat is growing. No one can doubt that North Korean dictator is getting more aggressive in his obsession for nuclear power. Haley said China can cut off its oil supply or the U.S. will take the quote oil situation into our own hands. We're learning more details now about some of the charges that have been made against former NBC News anchor Matt Lauer. According to articles in Variety magazine and the New York Times, Lauer exhibited a pattern of lewd behavior, including gifting a colleague a sex toy with an explicit note, dropping his pants in front of another female colleague, and summoning a different woman to his office to have sex with her. That woman tells the New York Times she felt helpless because she did not want to lose her job. Sources for the stories indicate that was a major problem. They say Lauer had so much power at NBC, no one wanted to speak up about his behavior. Bishop T.D. Jakes is shining a spotlight on the slave trade currently happening in Libya. The Dallas megachurch pastor is asking people to speak out against slavery and human trafficking after a CNN investigative report. The report revealed migrants and refugees are being sold into slavery. CNN recorded footage of men being sold for $400 at a nighttime auction. 
Jake has now joined a number of celebrities and human rights activists in calling for the end of the atrocity. It's estimated that between 400,000 and 1 million migrants may now be trapped in Libya. November 29th is a very important date to Israel. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the United Nations decision to allow the establishment of the Jewish state. CBN correspondent Julie Stahl explains the significance of this historic decision. Those who are in favor will say yes, those who are against will say no. They called it the partition plan. UN Resolution 181 called for the establishment of a Jewish state and an Arab state in British-controlled Palestine. It represented the acknowledgement of the international community of the right of the Jewish people to establish a state, also the right of the Arab people to establish a state in Palestine. The partition plan was so significant to the Jewish people that cities throughout Israel have named streets after the date. Kaftet Ba November, the 29th of November Street, like this one here in Jerusalem. In honor of the anniversary, Israel's mission to the UN celebrated by returning to the hall in Flushing Meadows, New York, where the UN vote took place. Today is the 70th anniversary of a great miracle, a miracle that was anything but guaranteed. In this very hall, when the United Nations declared to the modern world an ancient truth, that the Jewish people have a natural, irrevocable right to an independent state in their ancestral and eternal homeland. The plan set aside land in the Galilee, along the Mediterranean and the Negev Desert for the Jewish people. The Arabs received all of biblical Judea and Samaria, later known as the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and other small portions. Perhaps the most controversial part of the plan was that an international body would control Jerusalem. Still, the Jewish people accepted the plan. The Israelis didn't like it because it didn't give them Jerusalem and it didn't give them Eilat and, and all the southern Negev. But they, they accepted it because, okay, this was the best we can get. Arabs, however, gave it a thumbs down. They not just rejected it, but they waged a war, not just against the state of Israel, but against the UN resolution. Israeli Ambassador Alan Baker told CBN News, it's ironic that today Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas uses the 70-year-old resolution to call for his people's right to a Palestinian state. There was no such thing as the Palestinian people. That Then the Palestinians were the Jews living in Palestine. Uh, and, and so he, he claims that Resolution 181 is their Magna Carta for establishing a Palestinian state because it guaranteed a Palestinian state and a Jewish state. And he's misleading the international community. And of course, they rejected it. Ahead of the anniversary, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the most important thing for Israelis is remembering to connect with their past. The first need for the next 100 years is to remember the 4,000 previous ones. That is the first thing that will ensure the future of the Jewish nation in the land of Israel and the state of Israel. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Coming up, we'll take you to one of the most unreached places on Earth. It's known as the land of the blue sky, and it's where a camp is changing lives, one young person at a time. Welcome back. It's one of the most remote regions in the world, Mongolia, and very few people in that land have heard of Jesus Christ. But a Russian Christian team recently traveled there to spread the good news of the gospel. CBN's George Thomas had the privilege of escorting the team on its missionary journey. Mongolia is known as the land of the blue sky. That's because people here enjoy more than 250 sunny days a year. Landlocked between China and Russia, it's one of the world's least densely populated countries. 
with just over 3 million people. More than half live in the bustling capital city of Ulaanbaatar. The rest of Mongolia, which is roughly three times the size of France, looks like this. Vast, treeless grasslands where most people live a nomadic lifestyle, raising sheep, goats, cattle, camels, and horses. And as I discovered, there are hardly any paved roads. First time driving here in Mongolia. Uh, I grew up in Africa. I loved driving a stick shift. So uh, I'm very, very comfortable on these kinds of roads. So this is fantastic. And there's no traffic. I recently joined 46 Christians from neighboring Russia heading to remote Western Mongolia, where few have heard the message of Christ's love. Pavel Barsokov led the mission. The heart of my Lord Jesus Christ is for the lost and hurting. I want to have the same heart. For nine years, Barsokov has made dozens of trips to Mongolia, bringing along young Russian Christians trained and equipped to serve as possible missionaries and evangelists. 17-year-old Elena told CBN News she got the call to missions at a young age. This is her third visit to Mongolia. I read a book about a missionary in a foreign country, and since then, I have had this burning desire to share God's love with people. This is Natasha Gorodnuk's first trip. She wants to serve in Nepal. Every time I think about it, my heart breaks because I know the calling on my life and I know what I'm supposed to do. For several weeks, Natasha, Elena, and four dozen other Russians partnered with Mongolian Christians to hold evangelistic camps for young people. We started working together with our Russian brothers and sisters several years ago to reach my people with God's love. What we are doing is vital for changing hearts and minds. In between playing games and enjoying other outdoor activities, camp organizers like Natasha Greshenko introduce Mongolians to Christianity. This is her 10th visit. These kids are the future of Mongolia. They are future pastors, future church planters, and possibly future leaders of this country. God willing, they will carry the gospel in their hearts and impact their nation for Christ. To better appreciate the significance of these camps, you have to understand the history of Christianity here in Mongolia. Shortly after the fall of communism, there were only 10 believers in the entire country. Today, some 26 years later, some 60,000 believers are spread across this vast nation. We are in a remote western part of Mongolia, and it is still one of the most unreached places in the world. Michael Cherenkov with Mission Eurasia co-sponsors the camps. His group focuses on raising the next generation of Christian leaders in countries of the former Soviet Union and surrounding nations. Sometimes we think that people around the world know about Jesus, but there are places like this that haven't been touched by the gospel. And so, camps like this one serve as an ideal ground for sharing the gospel Whoa! With young people. Lives like that of 22-year-old Buyana Davasumbu. She accepted Christ while attending camp here as a little girl. She graduated from Bible College in May and is now preparing to go on the mission field. This camp was foundational to knowing God's love and preparing my heart to be a missionary. I try to come back every year to share my experiences of how I encountered Christ. For others like 16-year-old Mashbat Bassan, a Buddhist, this was the first time learning about Christianity. I learned in the Bible study today that God created the heavens and the earth, the animals and creatures of the sea. I never knew of these stories before. This is also Kilia Makmardor's first camp experience. Many Mongolians don't believe in Jesus, and before I came to the camp, I also thought I didn't need to know anything about him. But now my heart has changed, and I've learned so much more about Christianity. In all, some 1,000 young Mongolians heard the gospel, many of them for the first time. I know there's all this controversy about Trump and alleged Russian collusion. 
But I encourage Christians in both of our countries not to focus on this. Millions of people around the world are going to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ. I'm not interested in politics. I'm interested about telling people about Jesus. Lives are in the balance, and we are commanded to go and tell others about Christ's love. This is what we are doing here in Mongolia. George Thomas, CBN News, somewhere in Western Mongolia. Wow, what a wonderful story. Up next, lending a helping hand. See how this pastor is using a booth to show people the love of God. A New York City pastor decided to get to know his neighbors and lend a helping hand. His inspiration came from a Peanuts comic, and now he uses his booth to reach hundreds each week on the corner of 88th and Lexington. Reporter Caitlin Burke brings us that story. Each Tuesday on a New York City street corner, a booth goes up, Pastor Gregory Fryer sits down, and the crowd streams by. I have been pastor of this church for 25 years, but I have learned that it's easier to meet people if I simply sit on the street corner. His bright yellow booth is a tribute to an old comic. I'm charmed by the idea of Lucy and her psychiatric help booth. Psychiatric help, five cents, the doctor is in. And then I thought, well, I could do a pastor's version of that. Some people get the reference, others not so much. Either way, Pastor Fryer makes it work. All kinds of people stop by, and they all seem to stop by with goodwill. But sometimes people sit down on my booth and they burst into tears. And the reason for that is because we all have our own story. We all have our hopes and dreams and sorrows and setbacks. And I'm a pastor. My job is to listen as carefully as I can and then to speak back words of encouragement by talking about Jesus. When you sit on the street corner as often as Pastor Fryer does, your community starts to notice. That's why he started this whole thing in the first place, to let people know he's available for them. The church itself, it's beautiful. I love it with all my heart, but it's a little bit intimidating to people on the outside. That's what I'm afraid of. So I simply sit there in this kind of humble booth and make myself available. Pastor Fryer's approach helps take away any fear of rejection as he does this week after week. In theory, nobody could stop by my booth. That would still be okay because I'm looking at them. These are my neighbors. These are the neighbors to our church. So I try to look at them. And when I see them in the neighborhood, you know, I recognize them and they recognize me. After making himself available for nearly a year, some of those he's prayed with on the street now walk through the doors of his church. If we save only one soul, it'll be worth it. Well, we can point to one soul because we just baptized recently a young man who we met through the booth. As for the five cent charge, the church provides your fee. Still, many drop in some coins or a few bucks to help in the cause. I think it's because they like the idea. They like the idea of the pastor being available, even if they themselves don't feel the need for the pastor. From the corner of 88th and Lexington in New York City, I'm Caitlin Burke. What an awesome ministry. I'll tell you what, he's fulfilling the Great Commission right there on that street corner. We'll be right back with more of CBN News Watch. Stay with us. Welcome back. Jordan Sparks is married and is now expecting her first child. The season six American Idol winner married model Dana Isaiah. Sparks told People Magazine she and her husband secretly wed in July and now they are looking to welcome a baby boy into their family. The couple met last February and quickly bonded over their Christian faith. Sparks found out she was pregnant in August. She said she was terrified by the news at first, but now is very excited to see her baby boy. Congratulations. Well, that's it for now on CBN Newswatch. Hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.